drives hand washing behaviour. So what drives hand washing with soap? Well you'd think that washing your hands with soap is such a simple and easy thing to do. And though all of us know how important it is, the fact is we don't do it. It's really important because perhaps half of all diarrheal diseases that kill millions of children every year in developing countries, and also respiratory tract infections, they could be prevented by hand washing with soap. People know what they have to do, but they don't do it. Now why is that? Well, clearly you need the soap, clearly you need the water, but more than that, you need to live in an environment where everybody else is washing their hands with soap. You need to have learned as a child that this is something you should do and you should have picked up the habit of hand washing with soap. And if people don't have all of those things around them, it becomes very hard for it to become a normal part of people's everyday routine. So we at the Hygiene Centre have been trying to understand hand washing behaviour. What drives this behaviour? Uh, we've been working with colleagues in countries like uh, India, China, um, Ghana, Kyrgyzstan, countries in Europe, countries in Africa, and um, trying to piece together a pattern of what it is that's behind people's ability to wash hands with soap or their lack of it. Um, what we found is that behaviour is a complex interaction between a number of different factors. So if you look at this picture of a mum in Vietnam helping her child to wash her hands with soap, you can see the things that interact in her hand-washing behaviour. There's obviously the behaviour, her brain is the proximate determinant of her behaviour, but that behaviour is held in place by the setting in which she lives, uh, the physical, the social and the biological environment in which she lives. So to take into account all of those different factors that drive behaviour, we've developed the evolutionary ecological, the evo-eco model of behaviour. Uh, that assumes that the behaviours that we adopt are not just random behaviours, but are behaviours that were advantageous to our ancestors. They were adaptive behaviours that made us do things in our environments that were good for ourselves, and so we passed on our genes. Now, if you look at this model, you can see that there are a number of factors that drive behaviour. First of all, of course, behaviour is important for health. What's driving behaviour? Brains. What's making brains make the decisions they make? It's the environment, the setting in which the brain is. Now, if we want to change those behaviours, we have to change those settings, so we have to intervene. We can intervene at a number of levels, mass media at household level, individual level, for example. But if you want to design an effective intervention programme, of course you have to understand the problem first. Uh, and that's what this research, this formative research we've been doing was about. It was about trying to understand what's driving behaviour. Now, the results of that formative research gets fed back into the design of an intervention and you design and test an intervention and roll it out and hopefully you can see that as the cycle goes through you end up by changing behaviour. Now to look at this in a little bit more detail as you can see we've got three different brains in our heads and sometimes those three brains are telling us three different things. So you might have a brain that's saying okay hand washing it's good for me but at the same time your motivated brain, the brain that's in the middle, this rat brain that say, I want something, I'm hungry, uh, I, I'm, I'm in a hurry, I'm busy, I've got other things to do, it might be saying, okay, don't wash your hands with soap. And at the same time, your third brain, your brain, your, your automated brain, it's your reflexive brain that responds to things instantly, that brain might never have got the habit of hand washing with soap. So if we're going to understand hand washing behavior, we have to look at all three levels of drivers of hand washing behaviour. We also have to look at the environment. Uh, one of the most important things in the environment, of course, is the object, this soap, for example, that's so often forgotten in health promotion. Uh, this object tells you what to do. If it's not the right product for hand washing with soap, you're not going to do it. Um, the social environment, incredibly important and probably the most important thing in hand washing with soap. If you know, if people around you are doing it, then you're much more likely to do it. If you feel it's a norm, then you're much more likely to follow what everyone else is doing. More important also is the physical environment in terms of water, in terms of the surfaces, in terms of the drainage, in terms of the built habitat in which you live. And then finally, another aspect of the environment that's important is the biological environment. So we've shown in studies, for example, that people who know that there's cholera around or know that there's swine flu around are much more likely to wash their hands with soap. All 
of us everywhere, all human beings in the world have 15 separate motives. They include things like status, nurture, uh, justice, lust, hunger. Which of these motives are actually important for hand washing? Well, we went and worked with people in developing countries to figure that one out and we came out with four specific motives as being the most important in hand washing with soap. First of all, we have an innate disgust of things that are smelly, foul, horrible, sticky, that maybe have germs in them. If you've been to the toilet and your hands smell, or if your hands have got contaminated with something, uh, irrespective of any logic about disease, you feel disgust and you want to wash your hands with soap. Very important, number one driver of hand washing with soap. Second driver is nurture. Every mother in the world really wants the best for her child. She's genetically programmed to want that, and her loving and caring actions can include things like the mother in the picture, teaching a child to wash hands with soap, to love, care for, and protect her child. Third really important driver, possibly the most important in some settings, is what everybody else is doing. Human beings are deeply social. We can't live on our own. We have to do what other people are doing so that we can belong to the group. If everybody else is washing hands with soap, you will. If everybody around you isn't washing hands with soap, then it's something you're just not going to do. The fourth motive, perhaps not such a strong one, but important in some settings, was uh, status. Everybody wants to be clean because they want to be respected, because they want to get on in life, maybe have their children grow up to be a doctor or an engineer or something like that. And if you're dirty, you can't achieve those ambitions in life. So what, apart from motives, drives hand washing behaviour? Well, one of the clearest findings from our research is that hand washing is deeply habitual. If it's something that you learnt as a child or something that you've practised over and over again until you don't even have to think about it, then you're much more likely to be a hand washer. What about the environment? Well, clearly people need to create an environment that enables their hand washing with soap. And that can be as simple as positioning a jug of water, positioning soap uh, in the suitable place so that it reminds you as you come out of the toilet or before you eat, for example, to wash your hands with soap. We also need to make people remember that the environment is dirty and contaminated so that we can get that sense of disgust, uh, which will get people to wash their hands with soap. Uh, and we need to change the social environment. Now, the best way to do that is to make it an important element of manners so that every mother teaches that her child teaches her child to have the good manners to wash their hands with soap because it helps to protect other people. So it's something that everybody everywhere should do. It becomes a social norm that way. All along, I've been talking about our motivated and our habitual brains and about the environment, and I haven't talked about the piece of brain that most people think about as being most important in behaviour, which is this sort of clever cognitive brain up here, the one that you think, the conscious brain that you think is making the decisions. Well, actually, it's not as important as you think. The main reason we do what we do is nothing to do with what's going on in our cognitive brain, but we can use it. We can, for example, get people to pledge. I promise I will always remember to wash my hands with soap every time I come out of the toilet, every time before I feed my child or before I eat, uh, and I will always, always do it. Um, that is also quite effective at getting people to wash their hands with soap. So overall, the most important thing that we've learned about hand washing with soap from all of this research is that it's not what you know that determines what you do. Everybody knows they should wash their hands with soap, they don't do it. When they do do it, they're doing it for reasons of disgust, for reasons of status, for reasons of fitting in what everybody else does. So those are emotional reasons for hand washing with soap. We've also learned that unless it becomes a habit, something that you do automatically, it's not going to be sustained over the long term. And finally, we've seen, surprisingly, that those drivers of hand washing are the same in every country of the world that we've worked in, whether in Asia, Africa, or indeed in Europe. So, so what? We now understand something about hand washing with soap. And what's driving it? Well, we're actually using these findings to design more effective programs to encourage people to wash hands with soap and so to save lives around the world.